Yeah, I'm Joe, and I'm an entrepreneur, which means I like to work with other people on very focused projects, and I like to take one of some large group of possible ideas of things that are valuable or could be really, really valuable to people and connect them with money and turn them into stuff that matters. That's a really strong bias that I have, and so you're going to see this bias for the next few minutes of of uh, building companies and doing stuff in a very focused way with people is a way of getting stuff done. Um, I'm curious who you are. In the interest of maybe extending your life slightly, uh, how about I'm gonna get you to move your body a little bit. Let's say uh, everyone raises your hand. Um, come on, I know you can do it. Yeah, okay. Now, I'm doing a reverse. No, 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 no. Okay, now let's say, I want to find out uh, why you're here. So if you're here because you think that the field of aging has finally come of age and uh, it's the hottest place to advance your career or make a bunch of money, please lower your hand. Okay, that's minor. Um, now, how many are, are here because they just like, what is this aging thing? Or you're just kind of curious or you're trying to learn? Okay, a little bit more. Now, how many are here because this is your mission, and you believe that curing aging is one of the fundamental things that you, that we as a species and a society really need to do. Lower your hand. Okay. All right. Great. I'm just checking. Uh, we are a mission-driven crowd. Um, um, so that's a little verification, and I'm going to talk about mission. So over the years, uh, I've talked to a lot of mission-driven people in not just aging biology, but also other fields. Um, uh, where people are really passionate about some end goal. Saving biodiversity in Madagascar or whatever. Um, especially aging for me. Um, and I've, I've always broken this into three categories when talking to the people. Like, how are you going to get this done? And uh, those are the direct method, where there people actually go work on the thing. Um, you pick up a pipette and you start doing biology research. Um, the indirect method, where you think, well, this thing... I don't really know how to affect it directly, but I've heard that, that uh, people who are trying to do aging research are limited by the inability to properly sequence proteins. So I'm going to go work on a protein sequencer um, as opposed to just mass spec, say. Uh, and then there's a substantial group of people, and maybe it's just because I'm in this bubble, I'm from Silicon Valley, uh, of entrepreneurs who think, what I'm going to do is go out and get filthy rich first and then, because uh, that's what I know how to do, and then uh, I'll circle back later and I will funnel tons of money ooh, into, into this mission that I actually believe in, supposedly. So these three different ways of getting a mission accomplished uh, have different properties. Uh, the direct method, uh, I, you're gonna hear, hear my bias in arguing for the direct method, uh, and I'll talk about those in a second. Uh, and it, it pretty much takes mission-driven people to focus uh, directly on the thing, um, and but it's kind of scary because it's very, um, it can be very specific, less diversified. You you latch on to some particular mechanism. You you decide you're going to work on telomeres or senolytics or something, and maybe those pan out, maybe they don't, and maybe you uh, you risked a decade of your limited lifespan working on that thing. The indirect methods, lots of other people will do it, uh, so it doesn't really need you as much. Uh, and the, the, the problem with the, the money, what I call the money first one, is that there's really a pretty low probability of success. Um, it's like, I'm going to become an NBA star and um, win uh, at sports or something. You know, a million kids think they're going to do this, and then 10 of them actually do. Uh, and it's also easy to lose your way doing that. Uh, you know, as soon as I make 10 million, I'm going to give it all to, to SENS Research Foundation, and then you get the 10 million. I said, well, nine of it I needed to spend on my house in Atherton, so I'm going to keep going because um, there's a lot more to do, and I see how to make 100, and then you get to 100, and it's like, well, uh, the boat, and, and so anyway. Um, so just here, here, here's a list, definitely not comprehensive, just the ones that are closest to me or ones that I've had a part in helping create or um, are work directly with um, or just know about through, through the network, you know, there's BioAge Labs, Calico, Spring Discovery, or things I've invested in, uh, Juvena Therapeutics, i Therapeutics, Ocean, many of these are household names to you, Rubedo, uh, it's pretty brand new, Clear is new, uh, Intervene Immune, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, these I would all consider people are working on these projects, if they succeed, 
at the end of that chain, there will be something that people can use. And also, these are all linked, and if you want a copy of this, my email address at the end, just feel free to email me and I'm happy to send it to you. There's a, a bunch more things that are listed and linked um, in case you want to research these things more. If they succeed at this, at the end of it, there is a therapy of some kind that will be beneficial to humans. Um, so that's part of the definition. Now, academia I have grayed out at the end because people are sticking their neck out and committing to something. I'm working on fo the FOXO gene for five years of my, of my you know, postdoc or, or, or a grad student life, um, and that is committing. And that at the end of that, there can be more than just a really nice paper in Nature. Uh, there can be a company starting, so it's a little, a little bit of a, of a loop there. Um, and there's so many indirect efforts. Um, I'm guilty of them. Um, this is not a comprehensive list. This is a very biased list toward me. Um, Biome is my present startup company. I'll talk about it in a second. There's in Silico Medicine, which I consider a platform because the latest articles I read about, their very impressive efforts are that they're going to use AI to replace the entire pharma pipeline. Um, so produce drugs from the very beginning all the way through clinical trials uh, all in silica, which is really cool. Um, but it, it applies to more than just aging in that respect. There's advocacy, there's Health Extension Foundation, which is a nonprofit that I've been running for about six years. Um, SENS, Aubrey, thank you so much. Um, uh, is, I would consider both a direct and an indirect because they do advocacy uh, and they have actual labs where people are, I keep using this icon, pipetting, um, fight aging, thank you, region, reason, um, et cetera. Um, and then there's this new, newly cropped up group of funding agencies uh, around aging. YC Bio, which I'll talk about in a second, which I had a hand in creating, uh, Longevity Fund, Apollo, Juvenescence, et cetera. I've linked here a list on Google Docs of over 300 organizations that are, I would consider, indirect efforts that are support organizations, education, various kinds of projects. Um, there's so, so many of them. Um, many of them will be familiar, others of them not. A lot of them overlap. A lot of them are the property of people being involved in 15 things at once. How real are they? I just want to take an example of why I think that direct efforts are really, really in need right now. And the industry has been changing. So this is, for, uh, for example, Longevity Fund, uh, primarily Laura Deming's work over the last number of years. These are the portfolio companies listed on their website. And just looking, looking through them, uh, how many of them are really aging, are really longevity companies? And it's, it's about half, I would say. Um, Unity is making a Senolytic, Navator is working on Rapalogs. Uh, there's some aging related things that Metacrin is working on. But you know, precision is basically genome editing. It applies to almost every disease uh, and it's fantastic and you should do it. Um, Alexo is you know, basically a cancer company and there's a lot of cancer companies and it's, uh, I would consider those mostly not aging. What this ultimately says to me is that there's a lot, a lot of capital right now and they're still looking for people doing really good aging companies and that they can't find enough. And so I want you to create some. There's another form of indirect efforts that I put in the category of millenarianism, which is thinking that at some point society will be transformed in such a radical way that everything, the whole story is different. Um, and a lot of really smart, you know, passionate entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley think this way. Whereas what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create AI that's so powerful that it will figure out all of the other problems. And so why should I busy my little human mind trying to understand aging and come up with therapies for that when I can create AI and it'll create a super intelligence and will solve all the rest of the problems. And that, I, I'm not strongly biased in that direction, I just don't know that much about AI, so I work on biology because I think it's cool. Um, and nanotech similarly, nanomedicine, atomically precise uh, methods for having little robots that cruise around through your body and, and repair proteins and so on. Um, Maybe these are solutions, uh, but they're so far from, from my ken that uh, I let others work on them. Uh, and then just to talk about the money first strategy a little bit, uh, there's a really strong hindsight bias where people see the effect of some people making money in their entrepreneurial pursuits and then turning it around and using it on longevity and aging biology, et cetera, and think, that's so amazing, I wanna do that too. Uh, but 
if, if I go back and I was you know, just reading through the internet trying to find blog entries or anything like that from any of these people where before they started on their entrepreneurial pursuits, they said, well, what I really want to do is solve death and I'm going to make a bunch of money and then solve that later. And I don't see any evidence of that. So I think there's a lot of hindsight bias where people think that uh, that's a reasonable strategy um, and that, that they would likely be able to do that too. Um, but as you know, I'm skeptical on that one. So just a, a, a brief plug for the project I'm working on right now, a company called Viam that I founded uh, five years ago, and it's about 60 people now. And I originally founded it because I was running a nonprofit called Health Extension Foundation um, at Y Combinator for the first half year. And a lot of the speakers who came through kept expressing frustration about how difficult animal studies were to, were to do. Uh, when it got to mammals, uh, they became uh, inaccurate. Uh, they repeat the study, wouldn't get the same answer. Um, uh, and Tr Trevor Blackwell, uh, one of the YSC founders, um, when I was complaining about this phenomenon to him, he said, well, go fix it. You know, that's sort of their um, attitude. Um, if it's broken, fix it. And um, so that, I, I decided that was a, a good piece to break off. And five years ago, I think there were, it was less clear exactly what to do as a direct effort. And so this is what I call an, an indirect effort. There's all kinds of reasons for improving animal research. Uh, and aging is just one of them, you know, so lots of other people should be doing this, but I'm just doing it because it's some way out that I know how to contribute as a technologist and entrepreneur. Um, so in spite of that, a huge fraction of our total, well, the metric I use is cage days, like how many, how many days are animals in particular cages. Um, we have thousands of cages and we're now selling our systems uh, to pharma companies and biotechs all over the world. A huge fraction of those are devoted to actual aging experiments, uh, so that makes me happy. Uh, so I'd like to, to uh, conclude by saying, in reverse order, if you think about the three different ways of pursuing a mission, and your mission is around longevity and anti-aging, I'd say right now, if you look around, the money is flowing. There's more and more money from an entrepreneurial perspective flowing into, into anti-aging literally billions of dollars. There's funds being started, there's funds looking around for great companies to invest in, and they can't find enough of them. At least good companies, um, real companies. Uh, the indirect systems, there's so many of them. There's so many groups and societies and educations and aggregators and uh, like, just don't start another one of those. Uh, I'm guilty of having done a couple of them. Uh, I think it's really, really time to to go straight into, into the biology and create companies that, that, um, that can make a difference. Uh, I think it'll be, it would be the highest ROI for the field as a general, uh, you know, overall, um, and also for you personally, if you decide to start a company rather than start a nonprofit, uh, I think that, that um, or, or some hybrid perhaps of the two, a nonprofit that is specifically focused on finding the thing, licensing it, making the, getting the drug out there, I think that could have a difference, make a difference too. But my particular bias is companies get together, get extremely focused. Don't do 10 things at once and have your name on a whole bunch of lists of people who are supposedly doing stuff. Um, like really pick one and focus. Um, get into the lab, uh, do the actual stuff that it takes to, to cure our, our bodies and ourselves um, from this, this thing called aging. A way that I'm supporting people doing this right now is giving them money. Uh, so I uh, helped create, along with uh, Sam Altman and Matt Krisloff at Y Combinator, where I'm a part-time partner, uh, this program called YC Bio, taking a look at what it takes to actually do biology in an entrepreneurial accel accelerator setting. Uh, YC was set up with a smaller amount of money and only a three-month timeline, which just did not seem like the right environment to get uh, companies in bio going rapidly. Uh, y Combinator is really good at taking companies and helping them accelerate them across all different domains, not just in software, um, and making huge companies out of them, getting, getting them to un get undistracted, more focused, and work on the highest leverage things as fast as possible, and pulling this huge network of consultants and investors and so on. Uh, so what we did was we upped the money to a million dollars. So if you want to start a company, we'll give you a million dollars. It's the largest of any bioaccelerator that we know of. Uh, we'll give you a, a lab space for a year and nine months to get to your first proof of concept demo. 
Uh, and if you'd like to do that, uh, we're doing two batches per year, and I would love to hear from you. Uh, you can email me at joebl at ycombinator.com. You can also email me there if you want a copy of any of these lists or links. Uh, and I don't know if we're doing Q&A, uh, but um, that uh, is my main message. Let's get to work building stuff.